Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you've been following my channel for a while on my IS300 build, I was gonna convert this thing to manual uh, with all OEM parts and a W55 transmission. So on today's video, we're gonna go ahead and get started with that by putting in the brake pedal and the clutch pedal on the car and start this series. So stay tuned. If you guys have been following my build on this IS300 in the last two, two and a half years, my original goal in getting this car was to convert it to manual transmission. And I've been collecting all the parts on this and I've got a few videos of me actually collecting and showing you guys all the parts you need to do the swap. So in today's video, we're gonna actually get started on this swap by putting in the pedals. This is probably one of the harder parts just because of the access to the holes on the car and then try and get under the dash. In a second, you'll see why I'm gonna do it now when it's easy. As you can see, I'm in the middle of swapping out my dash, the sticky one on the 2002 for that 2001 non-sticky one that I refurbished. So since I got the dash out, I have full access to the pedals and the firewall and everything to make this job easier. So on today's video, we'll go ahead and drill the holes, get both pedals put in there, so when we actually get this thing started on putting the transmission in, I'll have the pedals in and I won't have to crawl under the dash and worry about that. Cause you can see out here under the hood, there is a lot of space here to work with as far as trying to drill, but drilling from the inside might be a little bit easier because you could actually get something in the right angle. Right here, if you have a low profile drill, you might be able to get it in there with a drill bit and drill some pilot holes just to get it started but we need to drill the big hole, which is gonna be a hole drill, and then the two small holes for the screws. So without wasting too much more time, I'm gonna go ahead and start unbolting everything down here as much as I can. Kind of move everything out of the way so I can access everything, and then uh, get this all done under here. So you can see I pulled all the modules and unplugged everything and kind of pushed the harnesses aside. So, and then I took apart the actual cover for the clutch part that pops right out that's already pre-cut. So you can see the hole right there or the spot where the clutch pedal is supposed to go. So I'm gonna go ahead, since I have access to the brake pedal now, unbolt this thing and take it out of the way. And then also get everything above, like the bolts and everything out, because I have to swap the actual hardware uh, the bushings and everything from this pedal onto the manual pedal so we can actually put it back in here. The bracket and everything can stay. So pretty much all you have to do is pull out the pin, slide that thing over, and then unbolt the 14 up top and that should come right out. As you can see, that pedal came out pretty easily once you undid the clips and did all that stuff for the actual wiring harness thing that goes on the pedal. Then you pull out that pen and that 14 millimeter bolt up top just slides right out and then the pedal just drops down. And over here you can see the manual and the auto pedal side by side and pretty much everything is the same. The replacement one's got that sensor, just like the old one right here on the automatic, so we don't need to worry about swapping that over. It's got all the actual plugs and everything, and even the wire harness uh, mounts and everything that mounts onto the car, so that's pretty easy and uh, pretty simple to swap over. Nothing to uh, worry about there. As far as the hardware we're gonna reuse, we're gonna reuse the bushings, the sleeve in the middle, the bolts, the washers, and the nuts right there, so we're gonna go ahead and swap that over. The one thing you'll notice right now is just the angle of it. If you see the automatic and the manual, the angle of it is where you can see the difference. And a lot of people that do the swap, they just end up trying to chop their pedal down. But the thing is with the automatic pedal, it doesn't curve far enough as you can see. So what you end up doing is like on the backside, you can't get that thing all the way over. If you see the manual pedal just lands like right over here on this part and then this part ends right there. So the closest you cut it is maybe right here, and then you trim both sides to try to fit one of these pads on there, which still keeps it off center and non-OEM looking. So to get started on getting this thing in there, I wanted to go in here and just test fit it and see what all the clearances are as far as what we need to still unbolt on here. So I noticed what we need to unbolt is 
there's like a bracket right here uh, right to the firewall or the reinforcement up here I believe is a 12 millimeter and there's actually a harness and a bracket there uh, on that spot but the top of the actual clutch pedal bolts into that same spot so right now I gotta unbolt that uh, probably just line that up and see how well it fits that bracket probably goes right on top of this afterwards uh, there is a bolt for that also i think when i originally ordered this pedal i saw that there was a bolt and i actually got that bolt so i need to find out where i put that thing because it wasn't really obvious where we we're going to use it and i must have thrown it somewhere looking from underneath you can kind of see that 12 millimeter bolt there in the distance uh, we need to access that and try to get that thing out and that's what that bracket's holding on to All right, so here's that bolt I took out for that bracket that's in there now. And this is the actual bolt that you need to go in there to get the bracket in. This is a 25 millimeter bolt. The 25 millimeter is the length of it for the threads. It's a 12 millimeter head right here. So this is the one I had ordered because uh, I saw it in the diagram of the clutch, but it looks like it bolts up to that spot on the firewall. Uh, obviously, this is one of the items that a lot of guys that do manual swaps probably leave out. It is kind of needed just to support the top of the bracket, but that bolt is impossible to get to unless your dash is out of the car. All right, so what I ended up doing was dropping this right here, these modules, it was just one 10 millimeter right here. It gave me a much more access to the pedal. So I was able to center the pedal down and I screwed in that screw right to the firewall up here. The problem with that screw is with it being 25 millimeters, if you actually put the bracket on top of it, it's very shallow and there's very little thread. So I'm not sure why it's so short. Uh, maybe because it's got like a crush wash on it and I needed to crush it first. But I did tighten it down without the bracket. When I do the final install, I'm gonna have to get this bracket in there. But I was able to get it in there kind of lined up on the pedal and everything's centered. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna use a center punch punch two spots so I could drill the two holes for the bolt in and then once I do that I can mark the holes for the center and then drill that out for the big hole. So the drill bits I'm going to be using to drill the hole will be a 30 or 31 millimeter hole saw right here. That's the exact size of the actual hole right there in the bushing. So hopefully it opens up slightly bigger. We might have to sand it open a little bit more once we get the hole done just to fit that in there. And then for the two bolts, we're going to go ahead and use right here, which is a uh, 3 8 inch drill bit to drill that hole. I do have this as a template right now. It's a stock Toyota gasket. I think I got this thing for like a dollar or two from the dealer. IS300 and a lot of the newer Toyotas don't even bother using this paper gasket, but this is off like one of the old Toyota trucks, which is the same bolt pattern and everything. But I'm gonna use this as a template and then I'm gonna actually use this as a gasket between the firewall and the master cylinder. If you need any of this stuff, I'll list the part numbers for all this stuff down in the description. Check that out. And as far as all those parts go, check out my old videos where I go over all the parts you need for this swap. Yeah, definitely if you guys are doing this clutch pedal, I really recommend pulling this dash out. Uh, pulling that dash out gave me so much more room to get the drill in and then just dropping all this stuff down here. If you didn't have the dash out, you would not see what the hell you're doing. You'd be laying on your back, bending your neck and probably twisting yourself into a pretzel. So we end up drilling that hole through, all three of those, so we get it started. I just drilled a small pilot hole for both of them, along with that center hole from the inside. This firewall is pretty thin. It drilled through pretty easily. So right now, I'll go ahead and get the hole saw, get that one started, get that opened up, and I'll see where I need to be on the two side ones just to get everything lined up correctly. But if you look over here, we're almost through as far as the hole goes. I just need to get it a little bit more so I can actually make it all the way through. And then even then, I think I still have to kind of sand and open it up a little bit. Maybe with a drill mower or something just to make sure that we can fit that master cylinder in there. Hole drilling using these cheap Amazon drill bits for the hole saw. 
isn't working out too well. That metal is just eating this up. This is actually my second bit I've tried. And you can see that thing is all worn down from this stinking metal right now and this cheap Amazon drill bit. Yeah, we finally got this thing out. Took a little bit, but I was able to just put the screwdriver in and bend it the rest of the way out. But you can see right there, it came right out with a little bit of excess. So that might be a little bit more than 30, maybe 32 millimeters, which is perfect for my hole. I'm gonna go ahead and drill out those other two and we'll start test fitting to see how well everything fits in there. All right, I was able to clean this hole up a little bit better. Ended up hammering all the extra metal that which is kind of the stretch metal and the shards flat so it doesn't interfere with anything. Uh, I had to open the holes a little bit bigger on either side just because it wasn't exactly centered or positioned correctly for the master cylinder. So I had to open it up a little bit just to get the screws in for the master cylinder. So now I've got the master cylinder right here. Remember my master cylinder was not for the IS. It was for, I think a T100 Toyota. I ended up changing the reservoir for the IS to fit. So it doesn't have the studs built in. So I'm just using some bolts and then some nuts on the back end. So I'm just go ahead and just see, put it right there and everything kind of fits in perfectly on this side. And we'll go ahead and look underneath, see how everything looks. Once I'm good with everything, I'm gonna vacuum up all the metal shavings and everything from shaving, put that little gasket there, and then we'll go ahead and bolt everything together. But looking through, you guys can see how everything fit nicely back there. It goes through, not really any interference as far as the holes and everything go, so this looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and get the pedal in here and see how well everything lines up. Uh, we may have to do some adjustments for that push rod once the time comes, but right now I just leave it because when you bolt this thing together, the push rod, you can actually loosen the lock nut back there and just spin the push rod to adjust it in or out. That's the same for the brake pedal also. As you can see from the time lapse, we got everything bolted back on correctly. Everything looks good now. Everything lines up right there as far as the pedal goes. So I'm gonna start bolting everything back together. The first thing I was gonna do was actually take this bolt that I had bolted on the top here and uh, actually put this bracket on, which I thought needed to be on there, but it looks like this bracket really just holds this wire management right here. And the clutch pedal actually has a slot for it right there up top right here. So we could just pop this thing off, which I already did, and then we'll just clip it into there, and then the wire management will actually go into there. The bracket's not really needed. That explains why that screw was so short. Once you put this thing on, it won't move or it won't actually turn into there, so we could actually just toss this thing. This is an extra bracket we won't need for this project, but I'll go ahead and kind of button up everything back together now, and we should be pretty much done with this right now, but I'll see how everything looks and lines up once I move everything out of the way. I got everything tucked away, all wire managed back to factory OEM look. Look at that, Team 3 pedal now, guys. Check this out. Uh, one of the things that you wanna be careful with when you put everything together, make sure all your wiring, your hood latch, anything you have over here doesn't interfere with the spring. I had to go up and down just to make sure nothing was hitting on that spring because eventually if you have any wires or anything that rubs against that spring you know all the times you're clutching throughout the day when you're driving this thing it's going to cause that thing to wear the wire or short something out so you want to make sure all your wires are out of the way maybe zip tie them or wire manage them to get them out of the way uh, once we put the panel back on i'll see where this cable is and see if i have to zip tie it on the sport cross we have the actually rear wiper uh, fluid that flows through the cabin, which the sedan doesn't have, so you gotta make sure that thing is clear too. So that's just another thing that goes through that grommet. But overall, everything's good. I've got my two 
clutch switches the top one and the bottom one the wires are hanging there so once i get around to doing the swap and actually wiring all that up i'm gonna have to loom those things up uh, probably end up soldering some extension wires to those and take them where they need to but i'm gonna have to loom that up so i make it all look oem as possible one of the things i noticed is this thing to actually go all the way down and hit that rear switch which is the start cut switch you actually have to push the pedal pretty far down into the actual carpet so that you can see this carpet eventually just wearing out back here just from clutching all the way down to the floor but that looks good there everything looks like it's bolted on nice and tight the brake pedal works wires and everything up here are back in place where they should be but the one thing was that this VSC wire and all this other stuff these cabling I had to make sure that uh, everything was the perfect slack because there is very little room under here after you put that clutch pedal in. Hey guys, thanks for joining me on this video on getting that clutch pedal and that manual brake pedal put into the IS300. Now that I've got my clutch pedal and my massive cylinder in, I go ahead and finish the rest of the actual manual swap, which to me is actually the easy part because I get, actually get it up on my lift right here, uh, pull out the old tranny, put the new one up, cut the holes and kind of do all that other stuff plus the wiring. Uh, the only reason why I've been delaying it so long was just try to get this clutch pedal in there and uh, now that I've got that done I'm all set and I'm ready to get started on this manual swap. So if you guys found this video useful for your project give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel to stay on top of my IS300 project, my IS250, my Sienna or my any of my garage projects go ahead and subscribe to your channel. Turn on bell notifications to stay notified every time I upload a video. Remember guys, for all these different projects, if I can do it, you guys can do it. I wanna thank you for watching and I'll talk to you guys next time.